Surviving Infidelity. She committed infidelity for 8 years. Well, I've had a few drinks and after getting several messages of wanting a backstory, here's one for you good people of Reddit. Me and my then girlfriend, let's call her Succubus, got our first place after high school, so we decided to throw a housewarming party with a few of our friends. Well later that night, I drank way too much after losing too many drinking games, and I ended up getting sick and spent a while in the bathroom trying to pull myself back together, only to end up going to bed and passing out. Well after everyone left, it was just Succubus and my ex best friend, let's call him Matt, they both ended up going for each other, I think he initiated it. They ended up in my guitar studio room on the other end of the apartment while I was passed out. And it gets worse. After she slept with him, she came into the bedroom and woke me up around 3.30 am to have round 2 with me, not knowing at the time what happened. Waking up that next morning, I had this gut feeling something was off but couldn't place it. I even made breakfast for both of them for Pete's sake. It was a month later, me and my ex went to a Halloween party at another friend's place, and after a long night of drinking, Succubus ends up falling asleep, and everyone there ended up leaving. I tried to call for a ride home but my phone died. I was looking around for a charger and couldn't find any, so I decided to grab Succubus's cell phone out of her bag, and when I turned the screen on she already had a text up with her best friend, and the first line it read make sure OP doesn't find out. Alarm bells going off so I read on. Succubus told her best friend everything that happened that night, and bragging about how exciting and fun it was, and telling her best friend that if the opportunity happened again, she's going to do it. I can't even begin to explain the feeling that came over me. I've never felt a rage and adrenaline rush that hard in my life. All I could see was red in the image of Matt railing Succubus. I ended up leaving with her phone. Driving home when I had no business driving in my state. Making it home, my father met me at my place. I proceeded to pack her things, and after charging my phone, I was calling Matt, pretending I didn't know anything. I told him that I wanted to hang out. Well, he was gone for the weekend hanging with his friends, and he told me he would see me Sunday night. Well after packing all of Succubus's stuff, I went back to the house to pick her up. She was still asleep. I woke her up and drove her to her father's house. Confused with all her stuff in the car and headed to her dad's house, she kept asking me what's wrong. Not saying a word. I just tossed her phone in her lap with the text exchange she has with her best friend. She didn't even get sad, she got enraged saying why were you going through my phone, and that's an invasion of her privacy. She told her father I was abusing her when we got to her dad's house. Well, she ended up calling Matt and told him I knew everything. And when I tried calling him to meet up Sunday night, he with the voice of a dying man said, I know you know what happened. I'm not going to come see you tonight. I started to laugh. And I told him I'd see him at work then and I had no problem going to jail. Well Monday comes, I'm literally shaking I came in a half hour early just to see he was already there. He told the boss what happened, and to not call the cops no matter what happened. I give him credit for that. And when I walked in, he told me to go out back. I proceeded to shove him to the ground yelling at him to get up. He just laid there, so I ended up landing a few punches to his head. And the hardest part was, I couldn't keep going. All I could see was him and me in first grade when we first met. It killed me inside. After landing those few punches I couldn't bring myself to do it anymore, and I just told him it wasn't over and walked away. Five years later, he reaches out to me and we start talking again. After telling me how sorry he was and after hearing from a bunch of people how he would get drunk and try and end himself from the guilt, I told him we could talk from time to time, but things would never be the same. Well later, he ended up falling in love with a woman his first real relationship. And after a year of dating, he finds out she was cheating on him. He was devastated. Matt hasn't gone a day without drinking at least a six pack, and his drinking became a lot worse. I ended up getting a call about a week later from him while I was at work. I could barely understand him. He was crying and blubbering words from being intoxicated. All he kept saying was, I'm so sorry, I deserve this, and I hope you can forgive me, goodbye. He hung up and I tried calling him a bunch with no answer. I notified work and told them I had a family emergency and left. I made it to his house in record time. When I got there, I ran to his door. One of those solid glass doors I saw through him hanging from the ceiling flailing his arms and legs frantically. I threw the door open and grabbed his legs and hoisted him up. The emotional roller coaster I was feeling was insane. Sure, I hated this guy for what he did, but he didn't deserve to die. After a long conversation and getting him sober, I helped him get clean. Just over this past summer I got a text from him saying, One year ago today you saved my life OP, love you brother. 
Today is my 365th day of sobriety. I can't believe I made it. Every day I feel conflicted. I hate him. But I'm happy for him. Can you guess what Succubus said when she found out? Aw, oh, poor Matt. This woman is a psychopath, and had zero remorse for the pain and destruction she caused. This is just one of the stories I have of my time with Succubus. Now for the top comments. Matt at least had the decency to be ashamed of his behavior, her on the other hand. Psychopath seems like a mild description, wowza. Such a crazy story. Hope you're on your way to healing mate. After typing this, I was laughing because it sounds like a poorly written drama show. I recently cut Matt from my life. Kinda the reason I'm drinking and decided to write this out. I may have forgiven him but I can't forget it, and it's not something I want to keep reliving in my head. Only time he really reaches out anyway is when he wants someone to make him feel better. Finally had enough. He goes through his breakup and I was there for him. Who was there for me when I was going through my time in hell? No one. I'm not going to be someone's doormat or emotional support anymore. I'm burnt out. This is probably what makes those good guys turn into a-holes, because I feel myself getting to that point. Cheers. Why wasn't this your only story involving succubus? Because I was weak and a doormat. Because I was in love. I'm not trying to beat you up. This was more for the benefit of others whose first thought is reconciliation. You learned your lesson. I'm truly sorry. I do know your pain. It's okay, hindsight is always 2020. It took me 8 years to find some value in myself and know I deserve better. Anyone reading this my advice is to just walk away. Reconciliation is not worth it. Now for the next story. Husband was sending message to a woman that we're separated and getting divorced, we're not and we were happy, I'm crushed. I've been married for 7 years and we have a 3 year old together. Something has been really off about my husband over the past few months. I chalked it up to work stress and quarantine stress. He's also been hiding his phone more, not outright, but he's been more attached to it. To be honest, I suspect something, but then I think I'm just being paranoid and don't act on snooping or anything like that. He's never done anything in the past. Last month, he tells me how he wants to spice things up in bed and it's been kind of boring. I was hurt at first but I agree, with a kid that sleeps like crap, it's hard to get quality intimacy in. Although, I've always made it a priority in our relationship and make time for it one to three times per week, so far from a dead bedroom. I listen, step it up, and become more present during intercourse. I was happy he told me, and was open and honest. Other than this, everything has been pretty normal. We're even talking about trying for a second in a couple months, and the reason I didn't just take a higher paying job because the company I am with, gives six months maternity leave unheard of at most places in the US. Not to mention we just moved to his hometown to be closer to family, which I was on board with. But we moved in February 2020 so right before the pandemic. So, it has been a little lonely and hard to make friends. Fast forward to last night, he stayed up and played some video games, but I wasn't feeling well and went to bed. He comes in and goes to sleep. At 3am his phone is going off, message after message after message. It wakes me and he works in a career that he can be called in at all hours. So I go to look, and it's Instagram messages from a woman. I look, and I just had a gut feeling, a feeling I've had for a few months that something wasn't right. I read them and it's him telling her how beautiful and hot she is, and how her ex-husband is dumb for leaving, listening to her custody battle slash divorce stories. He goes on to tell her that we are on the brink of divorce, and he has moved out of the house, none of this is true, we haven't had any large fights either. These messages are over a couple months. He messaged her tonight that he's filing for divorce and we're basically not together, then goes on about how guys probably message her all the time because she's beautiful. Playing the scorned husband whose wife doesn't like him. Pictures were exchanged, not sexual, but flirty in nature. I've never read or snooped his messages, so who knows what else has been done. Turns out it's a recently divorced single mom that he went to high school with. I am crushed. I thought we were partners in life, soulmates, best friends. We have a beautiful boy. I confronted him, and left and went to a hotel room. He admits to everything. I am alone in a state where I know no one, and because of our son's school and my work, I cannot just simply leave. I don't know what to do. My entire world got wrecked. I feel so useless. I try so hard to be a good wife. I do a lot of the domestic duties and child care. Even though we both work, I work out and stay in shape, I'm well groomed and fun to be around. 
His friends are always telling him how cool and personable I am. I let him have boys weekends, when other wives don't, I don't nag and he has freedom to do activities that bring him joy. My heart hurts. I am back in the house, and he is staying at his dad's. I want a divorce, and I know nothing about how to get one and what I need to do. I don't want the house honestly, I won't tell him that. From what I searched online I need to be separated 6 months to file. Now for some top advice. First and foremost, you should consult with a family lawyer. Survivinginfidelity.com and chumplady.com are two websites you might want to check out. Also, contact a therapist for yourself and for your son. Also, talk to your son's school about what is going on. Lastly, expose your wayward husband. Tell family and friends what he's done. He is likely to blame this on you. I hope that things will get better. I've already called a few. I do not want to get back with him. This happened before with a woman he worked with, not to this degree. But the conversation was not appropriate for a married man with a child. Any savings I have is going to go to lawyer. I've learned through a similar experience that even if you are an exceptional partner and drop dead gorgeous, people still cheat for the thrill. And it's so so disappointing because we feel we will never be enough. But in the end, people who cheat are just selfish. You're not the issue girl. He is. Time to find your way out and be gentle with yourself. Thanks, I keep trying to tell myself, I'm crushed. My family is non-existent, terrible childhood, I escaped poverty and abuse and made something of myself. My biggest savior is that I didn't become a stay-at-home mom and worked my butt off. We had a serious discussion on be being a stay-at-home mom and I'm glad I choose not to. His family is the only family I've ever known, and his friends, and because we just moved to his hometown, are my only friends here. I haven't talked to any one of them about this. I've reached out to a few close friends I had before him. I'm so sorry this happened to you. It's gut-wrenching and awful. I know you're still reeling and off balance, but as others have suggested, you need to talk to a lawyer today. No matter if you divorce or reconcile, you need to protect yourself. What you husband did is despicable and disturbing. I don't know how a relationship survives that, because either he means what he said and is planning on divorcing you, or he's some sort of thoughtless, self-absorbed sociopath who's lying to a vulnerable recently divorced single mom. No matter which, he has severe character defects and it's hard to picture a future with someone like that. Added to add, you should absolutely let the other woman know he's been lying to her about your situation, so she can also see his true character. I did reach out, and I in no way placed blame, but made her aware that this wasn't a scorned husband asking for advice. He was manipulating her and me. She apologized and said it was nice to talk to someone going through the same thing, and in no way knew that he was lying. In all honesty, her side of the conversation wasn't all that bad. It was my creepy husband that was the most concerning. I did make it a point that any man that is having marriage problem will never reach out to you for the purpose of advice. They want to sleep with you. Now for the last story. It can be done. This is my first time on this sub, so I figured I would give some advice on surviving infidelity. I am currently on my second marriage. Been married 15 years already. Couldn't be happier honestly. First marriage though was a different story. We met when we were both young. Only made it to 7 years. I won't get into too many details but the gist of it was, we were both young. It's not an excuse for what she did but it did help me cope with the aftermath. So to keep it short, my ex-wife had an affair while I was deployed. She ended up getting pregnant by the other guy, she had terminated before I came back from downrange. I assume partly because she knew there was no way in hell the kid was mine, but also, I think she knew that dude wouldn't still around. He knew she was married and I was deployed so I guess he just wanted to have some fun, but from the emails I got to read after the fact, he definitely made it seem like he cared and loved her, which he didn't. I had heard whispers in the beginning of our relationship that she had cheated on me, but ignored it because I didn't have proof, and the people who spoke about it I knew were not very reliable sources. The thing is, she had no remorse. I mean none at all. Somehow her screwing around was everyone else's fault but her own. Her family automatically took her side even knowing that she cheated on me. I think what bothered me most was, we had a child together already and she had the nerve to have this dude around my kid. Like most people though. I was still in love and wanted to work things out, but I'll be honest, she was the one that wanted a divorce in the end. As can be imaged, I was miserable and didn't know what to do with myself. I think the moment of change was when I decided to focus on myself and the time I spent with our daughter. The dude was in the military too, and getting him busted for adultery did feel great. 
The turning point in all of this was one day she had crossed my mind because of some paperwork I needed to sign off on for our daughter, and in that moment, I realized I wasn't filled with rage anymore. Don't get me wrong, I still dislike her as a person, but as long as she is a good mom, I don't give two shots what she does anymore. That realization came 16 or 17 years ago and I figured why not share. It does get better over time, and the one thing I learned from all of it was, it was not my fault. I was the best husband I could, considering how inexperienced I was with relationships. While I don't see it as an excuse, it helped me to just chalk it up to her being that kind of person. She did get remarried eventually, and that only lasted a year or two I believe. I'm happy with how my life is now. In the beginning it was hard with my daughter because her mother did manipulate her behavior, but thankfully, I was able to tough it out and my daughter realized on her own that her mother is full of crap sometimes. I'm happily married and my current wife had two children of her own whom I adopted early into our marriage. So now I have a wonderful wife, three great children, young adults actually, a good, steady job and no hatred towards the ex. I'm doing just fine but it all started with learning to not blame myself for things I couldn't control. I hope this helps anyone who reads it and I apologize if it seems like I'm rambling. Still not fully awake yet. Now for the top comments. I tell people, it's like someone else was married to my ex-wife. On the rare occasion we speak, we have no problems. Her husband is a good guy. They both were great with my daughter. I consider myself blessed and hold no grudge at all for her infidelity. Been 20 years. Good to hear. Can't stay mad forever no matter how much I wanted to at the time. I congratulate you brother that you could overcome it. I was 32 years in the Navy and I saw many horrible things, your experience is one of many. One thing that I have always asked myself, why do men always say that she is a good or excellent mother? Someone who takes his lover home is a good mother, who destroys the safe place of her children is a good mother, for example, for me these people are neither good nor less good mothers. I think for some of us it's a coping mechanism. For me it was easier to focus on some positive aspect of her I could believe in, instead of being angry 24-7. I am truly glad that you managed to secure a happy ending. Also, nice move on busting the affair partner. Thank you. Yeah, that part did feel good. He went from a sergeant promotable, to an SPC again. Also was nice knowing what he did got around, so it took a while before anyone would date him, unless they didn't know anything about him at all. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content.